Jeff, I think we are live there, sir. Um, looks like the mics are on. Is your mic on? We're live. So, uh, we're, we're here with um, YouTube and Facebook, and uh, happy to have everybody with us on this Friday. We'll give people a few minutes to um, come aboard. Um, Drop us a comment. Make sure you can yep. hear us. Yep. Please let us know if audio is coming through. Um, Crystal, would you see if we're framed? Yes, sir. Um, and uh, all framed. Um, let us know on both um, YouTube and Facebook if we're there. Um, so we're glad to be with you on this uh, Friday. Um, I'm David Gross with Kindy Systems, and this is, who are you? I'm Jeff Butler, and this is David Gross, otherwise known as the Mr. And, and Rogers. Here is, here is my uh, Halloween mask. Um, so this is um, going to be Elon Musk for now. This is a, a uh, mask um, concept that Jeff Butler came up with. It is our color light film, and um, I think um, this year um, I may go to the store and see if I can find a, a cardigan sweater. Cardigan sweater. So I can be um, Mr. Fred Rogers. So, uh, of sublimation. You know, so, you know, the Fred Rogers of sublimation. That's what somebody posted, and I thought that was um, uh, cute. And um, so, um, well, uh, speaking of color yeah, light film, give me just one second. Yeah. I'll be right back. Speaking of color light film, we're going to make something really cool with color light film today. So uh, y'all keep coming in and jumping on. We're going to give you a few more minutes to to fill up here. Audio looking good, Crystal. Has anybody uh, commented? That's what I'm trying to. One moment. We've got a yep and a wave. A yep and a wave. <laughs> That's, that works for me. Okay, so first uh, I'd like to thank all those folks that came by and visited with us at SGIA. That was um, last week in uh, Las Vegas, a uh, great time, and saw a lot of fun stuff. Um, and Jeff, where are we headed next? We're heading to Charlotte uh, for the final NBM show of the year. You guys, if you're anywhere in the area, you need to make the trek on over. Uh, Going to be a great show, short show, two days. Um, but it's going, we're going out with a bang. So Friday and Saturday, um, I will be teaching my class with Jeff on Friday, 8 o'clock a.m., um, and the show opens probably 10, so you'll get to, if you come to the class, you get to see it, um, and then you get to the show. Uh, our class, of course, will be on uh, what I would call Best Practices Road to Sublimation Success Series. Uh, the best part is if you come, guess what? What are we going to do at the show other than educate? We're going to give them something. So we're going to give you a $25 account credit uh, that just for showing up and sitting through our, our little dog and pony show. So we feel that if they make it through uh, an hour and a half of our our show, we'll give them a $25 and, and credit. And we'll have some huge grand, grand prizes also at the end. Uh, first place will be we'll give away an SG400 are the equivalent credit. Uh, if you already have a printer, don't need one. Um, also, it's a great time and opportunity to network. So, um, um, you keeping up with questions? Uh, mm -hmm. um, Crystal is, is watching the camera, so um, hope um, post something, let us know how things are going with you. So, um, also on Saturday at eight o'clock uh, in the morning will be Doug DeWitt's transfer paper class. Um, so please do that. And the kiosk will be operating. Uh, Finch Gross, which is my son, runs the kiosk, and he's been doing a great job this year. It is a lot of fun to come up with your phone and let us make something for you, whether you're a seasoned professional or someone that's completely new to sublimation. 
and you get to see everything right right before your eyes. And what else are we going to be doing at the show? Well, we're going to do a coloring station. Uh, it'll be in separate booths. So that's our, our MEM booth. The main booth is 609. All right. The marker booth where we're going to have the coloring where you can color and transfer. You'll, you'll color your, your artwork, bring it to the kiosk, and we'll transfer it onto a product. Uh, that booth is going to be 627. So it sounds like it's on the same row, uh, just a few spaces down, but that's always a big hit. Yeah, the, uh, the coloring booth is where we're really demonstrating the sublimation markers. And in my mind, the sublimation markers, I guess we, we have something around here. There they are. Uh, sublimation markers are sort of a, what I'd refer to as a paradigm shift um, in the sublimation world in that um, no computer, no printer needed. Just color onto plain paper and then press it like you normally would onto your substrate. Some substrates people have been successful with coloring directly on. Uh, the acrylic is especially cool and neat, so that's what we're going to probably focus on at the show. Um, I think they're inexpensive. How much are these critters? I think they're $35 a box. That's 10 colors. $35 for 10 colors, and the questions we've gotten from people about them um, are really quite funny, uh, hilarious in fact. People want to know, of course, uh, what's the yield like you would uh, yield on a printer or an ink cartridge. And I think um, ultimately I figured out by doing a little math, it's about four football fields is the yield of one single marker, you know, if you color directly. Um, and the best part is that you can, you can do what I call a hybrid, meaning you can um, come up with a design on your computer, print it to your sublimation printer, but design in an area for, for personalization. And they color in that area and then they press it, so it's really cool. Um, we just had a great, uh, another webinar with Digital Art Solutions. Those are the folks that, that really, I, I think they would, you could say they put Corel on steroids. Um, they effectively what digital art solutions is they make Corel easier to use and more powerful. Plus they have, I think, I assume they have the largest clip art you know, in the world for Corel Draw. Tens of thousands. So and they'll be they'll be exhibiting at MEM too. So they will. Oh. And uh, Craig, I think, is uh, Craig Merton's president of digital art solutions. He is teaching, I think, a all day decorating class probably the day before the show starts. So I'm guessing maybe Thursday. that's on Thursday. Uh, could be Wednesday, but something like that. So um, definitely um, if you're interested in taking your Corel um, skills to the next level, uh, that Digital Art Solutions is the way to go. They'll be there. There'll be other great vendors too for networking. Um, you know, people like the Rhinestone World, Matt there. Um, so you know, I love the shows, and I hope you're able to also just go ahead and Google NBM 2019, and you can see uh, where the show is going for next year. I think they're going to some new places. Phoenix, Milwaukee, those are both new. I think we're going back to Denver. Yeah, so it's, it's really cool. Um, so any other to go over current events here? I'm trying to think of... Um, and uh, we're having a lot of fun planning for um, our Black Week um, coming up, and so I hope you'll you'll stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We always have um, so many odds and ends and great things to do, uh, you name it. Um, and we're also uh, check your you know we're going to do a few extra type things. So we're going to have, uh, and it's on the label on the box that you can film an unboxing video. Uh, send it to us. You might, you know, I'm sure we'll give away some prizes for that. Uh, we'll, we've thrown a hashtag on it, Condi Black Box. Um, so allow you guys to have some fun. I know some groups get together and they open all the boxes at the same time. Uh, I think uh, uh, there's some sublimation groups that do that. So there's some, uh, we got some surprises coming. Yeah, always a lot of fun. And, um, you know, please keep in mind that um, we're a high-touch company, and if you're 
uh, need advice or you're struggling, um, I can't promise to you know, have the answers to every question, but if we can't help, we may be able to tell you who can. Um, the, um, you know, years ago I published my sublimation, uh, 101 Tips and Tricks for Sublimation Success. And number one tip, Jeff, do you remember what that is? Uh, put your name on, well, no, I don't. So There's I'll, been so many. So <laughs> it, it, it's something that us men have a little bit of a problem with. Oh, with the you know, mistakes. Um, well, no? you know, factors into it. So my first tip is document. Right. Um, document your successes, your failures. Document your questions because if you don't do that, what are you doomed to do? Make them again. You're doomed to repeat your failures, and it works its way into uh, creating your wall of shame. So, the best folks that come up to the booth at the show um, are those that have their notebook. They are writing things down. They're not uh, dependent on trying to remember what happened when they get home to write those down. So you might have asked questions about, well, how do I do this? Can I do this? Can I sublimate to, um, um, you know, who knows, Corian? Um, which is that countertop material? The answer is yes. So, um, and also share. I think the best part is to share with us and let us know, um, you know, what is working for you, what's not working for you. Um, how we can um, continue to help you grow. And, and, and on that note, on, on the sharing, ask, be sure, you know, in order for you to get good information, call your account manager and ask them what's working for their clients in your area. Uh, your account manager is your best marketing person. They know what's hot in your area. Uh, they know what the selling price is going for, what's cool, um, the trends. You know, it's kind of a seasonal thing. It, it, you know, it's colder up north than it is down south, so they can help you out. Uh, all you got to do is call them and ask them. They'll be glad to give you the info. Okay. What are we going to do today, Jeff? Uh, we're going to make a couple things. Uh, if you want to jump right into that, um, we can do that. You want to do that? You got some winners here. You want to go over the winners first? Yeah, we can do that. So we've got the weekly review winner, and we, we announced these yesterday, but let's, let's do it again. We kind of had some technical difficulties. So uh, so the weekly review winner, uh, which is when you submit a product review, you're automatically entered into a pool where we randomly draw winners and we win a $25 credit. And this week's is Denise Hennessy at Lucky Sheep Designs. And she gave us a cool review on Pro Spray. Um, using it on koozies, which is a must, which is true. That's all, you know, any of the soft stuff the, uh, Bottom line is, when you're doing sublimation, as each of you, you know, if you've been doing it for a while, you need to anchor the transfer to the substrate. As you open the press, air rushes in, it can cause things to move. And if the transfer should, should move even slightly, you'll get a shadow image, double take, and the solutions for those really come down to really three concepts. Number one is, you know, heat tape, which is great. Um, but on certain substrates, doesn't work too well. It doesn't work well on soft substrates. doesn't work at all on double-sided products. Um, and then Pro Spray is, a, is something we invented a gazillion years ago. And it's just a tack spray that holds the transfer to the substrate. You know, for instance, double-sided products, metal, um, huggers that, that you want to transfer both sides so really it's it's both of those need to be in your arsenal and the third way is sort of a combination of a paperweight where maybe you're doing something with the substrate on top like a piece of metal but ultimately it, there isn't an opportunity for the transfer to move because you, you've anchored it um, and really that third way also can be just Learning to be kind in general with opening your press. Don't jerk it. Uh, don't don't rattle it. Don't move things. Do it slow enough where you're you're not allowing too much air to move in all at once. But as word to the wise, pro spray and heat tape. You need both of those in your arsenal. And remember, always talk nice to your printer and your heat press. Yeah, you know it's it's um, it's remarkable that you know folks' equipment tends to. 
behave and, and um, last longer. Yes, if right. you if you talk nice to it, if you take care of it, <clears throat> and if you don't know how to take care of your equipment, you can check in with Condi TV to our videos. You can call and ask. Um, but generally speaking, you know you need to you need to take care of your equipment. So we just had a, a news break slide in here, uh, and so we've got our weekly design contest winner. So we have a monthly contest, uh, which runs all month long, and this month's is football-themed items. Uh, and then we have a weekly, which is a $25 credit, and this week's winner is You Design, I Create. You Design, I Create, $25 credit for these cool sandstone okay. coasters. I'm gonna walk this over here. Pay attention to the packaging also. I'm big on packaging and uh, merchandising, and that's a really good job. Looks like they printed some cardstock, put the coasters in there, and then there's a, you can see the cellophane bag. I'm assuming it's adhesive on the back. I get those from Amazon for almost nothing, by the thousands. Uh, but that's a nice job. You design, I create, you won 25 bucks. That absolutely awesome. So this would be an example of a product that um, and those are pet is, is not personalized, but it'd be what we refer to as short run designs, where um, she would partner with, and, you know, could be a retail establishment. She or he may have their own uh, retail shop. Um, if I know, put these, if I had a small display and I put these in my local dog groomer shop, I would, so I'd be restocking it every month. I yeah, they sure. they um, they definitely would sell very well. The um, car coasters, um, you know, folks love it. Um, you it's know, if you didn't realize one. it, the ladies are the ones that are are spending most of the money, and and so these would be very attractive, I think, for for a dog or cat lover. Um, just just look, just awesome, great designs, and you know that's so it's all about designs. Um, if if you um, if you have trouble with that, and I would say I certainly have trouble with designs, then then you partner. You partner with um, those artists out there that can come up with the designs, and since you're sort of paying them, you know, for it, um, they become yours. Um, so you could you could work on a wholesale basis with a gift shop. It could be your own gift shop. Um, you could do what I tell everybody do do, and that is partner with a pet groomer. Um, you think about just how much people are willing to spend at a pet groomer, and I think it's amazing. Um, obviously, I don't see a lot of cats at a pet groomer. No. You know, that wouldn't work out too well. But um, Well, the other thing is you don't take your animal to the pet groomer because you have to. You take them because you want to. And if you, you want to spend money, you want to spend a little more on something else on the way out the door. So you really do. And I think every pet lover needs a... Uh, Christmas ornament for their their dog yeah, or cat, totally. their pet, their pet. It could be a, a bird. Who knows? Um, but but they need a. Um, Do they groom birds? I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. If any of y'all have birds out there, let us know. If and if them. you're if you're going to make something like that, that's a personalized gift. Remember to date it. Um, you know, so that they'll start that that collection, that Hallmark collection of ornaments uh, from year to year. Um, you know, and you know, most of the ornaments are double-sided, so you can you can have a lot of good things like you know, put their name, the date on one side, the, their photograph on the other. So I think you know, personalized products are just just a gold mine. But you got to get out there and you got to make those sales. You've got to show people what you can make. Um, and so just because you're a good artist, just because you got great-looking products. Um, is doesn't mean they're going to move. So like uh, this person here that, that won it, obviously they're out there um, making the products. And, um, and, and you, what you just struck on, with the, if you're a great artist, man, that's great. If you're not, find a great artist, partner up with them, help that artist get their artwork out into the marketplace uh, by you making the products that, that people can afford so you can't afford a Twelve hundred dollar canvas, but you can't afford, you know, thirty dollars set of car coasters. You know that could be your artist artwork. You put the text on it, you package it up, sell it. Everybody wins. 
And um, and remember to not not undersell your products. Um, pricing turns out to be probably one of the most challenging subjects for sublimators because you're creating a high value product, and if you undersell it, um, it's going to decrease the the value of it. So we've got some worksheets um, that help you with pricing range, and, and so please you can ask your condi rep for those those pricing sheets. But you know, um, people want to pay for value, um, and so you know, try to understand where you need to be at uh, in producing a product. Um, we also there's some webinars on YouTube as well with Jimmy Lamb from Sawgrass. So you yep. know, dig through and find those. Uh, you should be able to search YouTube channel. With Jimmy Lamb, L A M B. Yeah, just you can go to the Condi TV and, yep. and um, search the channel uh, um, for you know pricing. You can also just go to YouTube and probably type in Condi Space Pricing, things like that. So the the use you know watch the webinar, look at the document, get you know get the document from your your account manager, use it to. But together. you think about the markers here. You know you can get tapped into say fundraising at a school. Um, schools are always doing stuff like that and uh, work the markers. Um, you could produce that, that uh, just incredible keepsake ornament for mom and dad, for the grandparents, um, uncle, whoever, um, with, with the markers and an acrylic um, ornament. Um, so, you know, most of the time, you know, when we print, we need a mirror image, but uh, with the markers and, and our acrylic or glass, you don't have to worry about, about uh, mirroring it. So I think the, the fundraising aspect of working the markers into a school is great. You know, if you have something that involves the parents as a fundraiser, you're going to cut the school a little bit of the profit, uh, possibly bring in a, one of the, the small presses like, say, a JP14 from the George Knight Company, and you produce the products, they can take it home right there. Um, or they can wrap it up. You can have a little wrapping party, so yep. it's, it's all set to go. Um, what an incredible high value um, way to to uh, thank mom and dad. Um, so great opportunities. The the new handmade cards, so to speak. So we went through our winners. Uh, we talked about MBM Charlotte. Talked about our webinar that that. Uh, Black Friday. Uh, let's make something. What do you say? You want to? Absolutely, Jeff. Um, so we got a couple you got, things. You got a serious pile of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I got a pile here. of stuff over here. You know me, I'm always doing weird stuff. So this is something that we saw online. And what, is, what it essentially is so this is our new wine box. All right. Really, we have really the, great product. We have the inserts for them, but then we found this. So people were taking these and taking a, a film, and then they're taking these candles electric candle, don't want to use a real candle in this, that fits inside the box, all right, no heat, and then using our color light film, just like the mask over here that we were talking about earlier, so you get this really cool lantern box, and if the lights are out, you'll be able to see, once you, when you turn the lights out for us. Yeah, I'll hit, the, I'll hit the lights real quick so we can see it. Flicker in, it's doing its little thing. So, what I've done is I went ahead and cut. Now, the thing you're going to need to remember is you're going to do this with 12 by 24 sheets of color light film. So, you'll need to order a full sheet. And then I've cut strips. I used the AccuCutter uh, shear and cut my strip. I had Todd, our graphic artist, print up a, a transfer for me that I think is going to look real well. This is cool stuff. So, I'm just going to whip it together here, and I'm going to put my film, let me find my coated side, that's my coated side, right? That's it. Coated side down on the transfer. I'm going to use a little heat tape because it's right here beside me. And just, and also, you know, if you get a big sheet, you can, you know, maybe a little too late for Halloween stuff, but, um, Certainly, you can, you can think about all the parties you could have with people wearing a little mask or something. Uh, 
costume parties. Uh, who knows? Uh, might even work its way into the wedding market. I mean, it seems like every product we have has its fit um, in in the wedding wedding cycle, from save the date to the, the uh, honeymoon gift. Yep. Again, telling the story, like we talk about all the time. So, speaking of telling the story, one thing that you guys could be doing, and this is what we're doing in our shop right now is tomorrow we're having our second annual open house. So if you guys, you know, you're familiar with the open house we do here, uh, this is a great time of the year for us to do it. The weather's perfect, it's in the 50s, 60s out there, uh, sunshine, some of our other neighbors in our building that we're in are doing events, so we're doing our second open house. Last year was a big success. If you've got a showroom or a, uh, or a shop Open it up. Do a little. All you got to do is have a little hors d'oeuvres and some a little wine and a little, you know, sodas and and stick some balloons on some stuff and invite your customers to come in and take a look at what's going on because I'm trying to trigger them for the for the holiday buying cycle. So if I can get them in the door now, introduce my new products and put stuff out there, then they know where to come come Christmas time when they're ready to go shopping for Christmas, which. They may be doing that now, so fall open house. If you got to see if it looks good, it's good no, it looks great. Okay. But like I said, if you've got a shop, it doesn't cost you anything. You're going to be open anyway. Just stick some cocktail weenies and some crackers on a tray, have them come on in, and uh, just make them feel good. You know, man the the place up, get all your help in there, so you can take care of them, talk to them, and just show them what you're doing. So there, how about that? that a wow. Gorgeous transfer. That really is. So I'm going to slide it in my box. And it's probably here, it, she put it between her two uh, boards as usual, let it cool flat, but um, Sprite it looks here. good. <laughs> and uh, Sprite has taken a little, little mini vacation. I think she went to one of these music festivals. Yeah, what she's out you, having fun. I can't remember the, the name of it. It's down in Florida. Hallow something another Halloween kind of thing. Yeah, you know? it's cool. Sprite's, Sprite's a cool person. Wow, that's that cool. is cool. So again, that's got the battery-operated candle in it because you don't yeah, put a real candle nice. in there. But, you know, we've had those things around the office and they just burn forever. But... That's pretty cool. And I don't know if I put a bottle of wine in it, but you certainly could put the FR or the the hardboard yeah. insert and then have this as an addition. So they come to the event, they bring the bottle of wine, they've got the hardboard insert in, you take the wine out, they everybody bring the drinks. Hardboard insert? I don't uh, have one. So but they but they drink the wine and then they leave that out and then now they've got a lantern. So it's a two two part gift that just keeps on giving throughout the year. Absolutely, yeah. So, very inexpensive stuff. This, you know, you find it, remember, 12 by 24 sheet because it's got to be long enough to go in the box. And I forget what the exact measurement is, but it's not, it's more than 12 inches. It's easy it's to cut, 16. scissors you can cut it. Um, I yep. assume you can cut it with an X Acto yep. blade. It is too heavy to cut with most of the um, cutters, like the Silhouette Cricut kind of thing. It's just a little bit too heavy. Uh, for those, I think a uh, number of people here have tried. Uh, it can be laser cut, um, and that's how actually, after we coat the sheets, um, that's what we do. We laser cut it into different uh, different sizes. Yeah, and I think we have the specs on laser cutting it online. If we don't, we need to make sure they're. Yeah, I'm a laser dummy, here. folks, I'll tell you that. But I'm, well, I've got a lot of friends who just are raving geniuses at it, and it is laser safe. Our Diflex, uh, the Color Light, the acrylic can be laser cut. Um, so the natural so wood, the, the Unisub natural wood. The uh, hardboard, the Unisub hardboard, um, absolutely is laser cuttable. Um, Product like that, you know, if you hit it with a laser, um, you're gonna, you're generally gonna blacken the edges. Um, so hardboard, you know, works out really well. So, do we have any questions? Well, any questions popping up? Is everybody saying the audio is good? Yes. Okay. And we've got a lot of thank you for the great ideas and some hellos. So. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, let's do one more real quick while we got some time. So this is something I've been talking about doing for a while, and I'm finally gonna put it together here, but. So this wow. 
is just a little simple wind chime. So in looking around at wind chimes, Woodstock chimes seems to be the guys. So they've got they wholesale to the public. Um, this chime I think is about 11 bucks, 12, something like that. You can get them on Amazon, you can buy them direct. Um, and so looking at it, I was like, I got this one on clearance somewhere, maybe Hobby Lobby. I think it was about four dollars. So Hobby so Lobby and Hobby kind of Lobby carries them right. Be a great place. And, and like I said, this was on clearance, and I used my little forty percent coupon. And Quick I think question it, from Samantha. Okay. Do you carry the camp mugs? Camp mugs. Our question is, do we carry the camp mugs? And we do. Yep. Um, camp mugs are incredibly popular. Um, great product. In fact, we're working on expanding the camp mug line at this point. Um, so, just just a great. Uh, typically, you you know use it in a heat press. Um, just don't put the whole thing in. Push it all the way up to where you catch the rim because the rim is larger there. Um, can be done in an oven. Um, um, probably using one of our the new style sleeve wraps. Yep. Uh, would be the way we have a new technology in the wraps. Um, it's a red plastic. You pull it over. She continues with, "Do you sell them single or only by the case?" Single. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's relatively few products that um, you have to buy by the case. Um, you know, if a, if a, you know. So I think some of the ceramic mugs is really. The only economical way to do it is by the case, but the camp mugs um, buy the each. So, back to my wind chime here. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I've taken one of our acrylic keychains, I believe it's a keychain or an ornament, and I'm going to transfer it onto this that's pierced at the top. And I'm going to put it on my wind chime. So, I'm going to line up my acrylic here. So I think the only real difference between a lot of our acrylic and keychain ornament is the um, keychain, um, you know, obviously um, you, you, you either get the finding you know, right. or, or so separately. I can't remember that. That's about it. Um, but otherwise, I think it's uh, well, we'll press that for a minute. So I, I, when you close the press, was the acrylic on top or bottom? I had the acrylic on the bottom and the yeah, transfer yeah. on top. So that's how you do acrylic. Um, it, and you press it really hard. That's a heavy press, so maybe a little bit too much pressure. Um, but it, typically, we would um, acrylic with coated side up. Don't mirror the transfer. Transfer on top, press. Um, just an easy product to press. Um, and of course, review our instructions. So we update our instructions. Um, often, as we get feedback from you, we also uh, update them when there are changes with the product. Um, so, and, and there's our, a date as well, and then we've yeah. also we just added, we just revamped all of it. So we've added a stacking order, which shows which is you so important because what order, right? The, the words sometimes when we write the words, they come out as, as the old BCR instructions, right? You know? <laughs> Um, for, for those that remember even what a VCR is. So, um, yeah, it came with a big, thick book on how to set the clock. That, that was as confusing. Everybody's clock was flashing. Confusing as Nationwide, it was 12 o'clock. Everywhere. Yeah, no, no Y2K problem no, with uh, right. VCRs. Perpetually 12 o'clock. Well, I'm going to let this cool. But yeah, look at on the instructions, when you're looking at an individual product, down below you got tabs across for. Uh, instructions, videos, etc. Click instructions. It'll give you a, a little. Uh, uh, well, it'll give you a little brief how-to. I think it's time, temperature, pressure. Click it for full instructions. It has a stacking order. It's all color coded. Um, and then look at the date at the bottom. It's got a date. Yeah. Some so to give notes. you the instructions, you go to where you would purchase the product. Right. And there are tabs underneath, like templates, videos, so forth. Um, also, my favorite by far is the client gallery, um, and um, and so you can look and see what other people are doing with this product. So we really cool. Wow, that turned out. Yeah. Um, this, this looks awesome. So there is my piece, 
And what I'm going to do now, uh, and, and you know, if you have a product uh, like the sun catchers, you could use the acrylic yep. as a sun catcher. Um, could be just you know a little suction cup, put it on the the window there. Um, just will glow with the sun. Um, in this case, um, you know, having uh, uh, this, I, I remember uh, some kind client of Condi sent me a um, wind chime. Um, I can't remember what sublimated piece is at the bottom, but still have it to this day. Love it. Um, so, you know, really a um, great use to provide a personal touch for a traditional product like this. And, um, you know, go check out and see just how inexpensive uh, you can get some of these products at, at places like um, Hobby Lobby. Wanted to share a wonderful comment we have from Joseph. I bought my SG400 this morning from you. Larry Kirby was very helpful and super nice. I am super excited about getting it. Good deal. So, um, um, client that just bought their printer um, from uh, Larry Kirby. They have a lot of great reps and they're, they're consulted. Um, what they're here to do is help you grow your business. Um, that's, that's our business model. If you're successful, then, then we're all successful, and that's, that's really what it comes down to. And, you know, again, to, what was his name again? Joseph. To Joseph out there that sent in that, the, the very first, first thing I would tell you is get that notebook so that you're going to start writing things down. They'll be in the top of your printer. There'll be a, some quick start instructions. Um, and then once you're at a point where the printer is in ready mode, you're going to hand it off to us. We're going to remote in and set things up. And some people, you know, they're not used to that. They're not used to that high touch. But the reason we do it is very simple, is that um, we just want to make sure that it's done right. Um, you know, and so if you think about the things that all have to come together to produce great products like this. It does look simple, but you know, you got to do everything right at the computer. Um, you got to do things right at the printer. You got to have the right paper print on the right side. And then, then you got to do things right at the press time, temperature, pressure, technique. And when you put everything together, of course, it looks looks easy. How about that? But again, you got to do it. That is awesome. I want to take it closer to the camera. There is my, now I have a $40 personalized wind chime that I, you know, like I said, I think this was four, four to six dollars. The acrylic piece, a couple bucks. Um, had Todd do a, uh, an initial on it. And so, hey, personalized wind charm. These are $39.99 all day long. And the sun is going to make that glow. Even indoors, it's still going to look great, but, um, Put it out um, where the wind can, of course, get to it, and you got a great product. I, I think you know, wind chime is probably are pretty good even in the house. But um, um, you, know, you think about all the opportunities to to um, really introduce personalization um, into your your um, could be your home office, could be your home, um, you name it. So winding down here, we've got some sales. Let's talk about those. Uh, running right now, we've got some flash sales on MDF football flags. These we've got these football shaped items to help you get into the, the gallery contest for best football themed items. And those prizes are 200 bucks, 100 bucks, 50 bucks. So, uh, football plaques, football shaped mouse pad, aluminum football helmet ornament. Uh, of course, it is football season. Um, stadium seat cushion. Those are all on sale. Flex Soft Neon is on sale. Let's talk about the stadium um, football cushions. I was going to bring one of them in here. I, I thought did. we had one in here. Um, it's outside. But um, what a great uh, fundraising kind of product. Um, you know, for the band, um, you name it. Um, all those folks are always running uh, fundraisers. And they really need high value fundraisers. It, it's time to, to provide a fundraising product that's going to turn into a cherished keepsake instead of a, the, the, just the lousy products that uh, you know, we have to put up with. And, and always date your designs so that you can pave the way for next year's fundraising product. Once you're in an organization, um, it's really a partnership. Make sure they make some money. Um, bottom line is, is 
if you do a good job and you're paving the way for, for fundraisers from then on out, and guess what? If an organization makes money, they're probably going to tell another organization. They're going to they're going to share it, and so there's there's just you know just an incredible amount of opportunities. But you got to make a sample. You can't walk in and say, hey, I think I can do this. Um, can you imagine this product? You want to get their logo. You want to show them what you can do, um, and and then you're going to probably get to the decision maker pretty fast if you don't already know who that is. Um, so Samantha says that she would really love to see the cushion, and then Lori says, "What do I need for the kitchen towels, Valor?" Okay, let me go get the the um, stadium cushion real quick. Be right right back. Keep talking, Jeff. I am not sure about the kitchen towel. Is it, um, hand towels, or we've got several towels. Um, I, I do know that one thing that I've experimented with is with the Flexoft and cotton towels. So the little thin cotton towels you can pick up at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, different places like that, and do the Flexoft on them. But I'm not sure of the. The Lord I think hand I can talk a little bit to it. Yeah. So here's um, this frame pretty well. Hand towel. Uh, frame, um, Crystal. So yeah. um, it, I think it's just the right seat, you know, size um, for, for folks and um, nice and comfortable, really thick. You could also use it as a garden kneeler. Um, I've seen a number of people who do that. Uh, again, you know, easy to do. Stinks a little bit when you press it, but that's the nature of, of this kind of material. Um, but, but a great product um, all the way around. Now on the kitchen towels, there are a number of towels we have. Hand towels, particularly. Yeah, there are a number of towels that we have that would make great hand towels. Um, you could also start looking around. Um, if you're looking for something that's obviously a uh, polyester-based product. Um, so I think we've got some good candidates, but the towel world, of course, is, is, is very large. Maybe a little golf towel with grommets. I think it, I think it would. would. You can buy that towel with or without the grommets. Exactly. She clarifies if she needs the Teflon pillow to stop the marker, uh, the paper marker. So the question is, when you're transferring to uh, soft substrates like shirts, like towels, um, the the if you just simply cut your transfer and press, um, you're going to see crease marks. Um, you know where where the uh, edge of the paper was, and there are a number of strategies for for not doing that. One of them is to put the uh, vapor pad, um, vapor foam kit pad underneath, make it just a little bit smaller than the transfer, um, and then use light pressure. I've also seen other people um, that that will will repress a product after they sublimate. Um, so that they can they can um, press out creases. Uh, I'm going to check that out. I, I saw that the other day. Um, and so then the other method is to deckle the edge, you tear the edge, so it's a nice soft edge. So when when creasing occurs, it's hard to um, hard to see it. Um, but but by the book, the the vapor foam kit. You know, is is the suggested method, and there is a good video on the vapor foam kit on our channel. So it is. So, um, but you know, if your paper is big enough for the product, then you're not going to have an edge right. to for the uh, edge to crease. She said, "I've tried tearing the edges. Still curious about the Teflon." So, the, the instead of using Teflon or a Teflon pillow, we use what's called a vapor foam kit vapor foam kit, you buy in a roll, and you, you roll off what you need, and you cut it so that the size of the piece of foam is slightly smaller than the size of the transfer. You put the vapor underneath the product, you put a piece of paper on top, put your towel or shirt on top of that, put your transfer down, and you position the transfer so that it's on top of the piece of vapor foam, and use and then you put a piece of paper on top of that and you use relatively light pressure so that when you're pressing um, you don't press enough with enough pressure so that the, the edge of the transfer floats it floats it doesn't hit hard bottom which causes a crease um, she said you're the best 
Well, we do have a question from Robert. Okay. What's the best way to secure team logos for schools? Ask. Um, high schools, middle schools, ask permission. I mean, the so there, there's two parts to this. One is, is there is there some sort of um, copyright or license that's necessary? But the other is coming up with it. And I would say that, that most of the people that would have a good vector art for a high school logo or whatever, they're not they're not going to give it up to you. So it's not going to be available to you. So ultimately, it's a matter of turning to your art department or your artist partners, if you will, to to get a an ugly raster version of it. We draw it into a vector form, and then make sure you're selecting the right colors with with a color chart. So. Um, I would say asking for a vector art of a school is sort of not going to happen um, unless they, you know, really are sophisticated. There could be an art department there that is the keeper of that. You can certainly ask. Um, I think I think one of the, the most significant parts of that puzzle is the color, the actual color itself. So matching that school color uh, using our color matching technology such as our color charts, is going to get you real, it's going to get you pretty far in the game. It is. But I think ultimately, um, you, you may have to just say, hey, you'll, you'll spend the time to get the artwork re, redone into vector format. Um, obviously, you want to check with them to make sure you have permission to use um, their, their logo. Um, and I would say, for the most part, um, should be a straightforward process. Joseph asks, when doing ornaments and the sandstone coasters, is there anything needed other than butch paper, like blowout paper? So um, on the sandstone coasters, um, so uh, typically it's, it's the product is face up, transfers face down, piece of paper on top. I don't believe um, we use a green pad very often. There are some people out there that do use green pads um, and often it's because they're transferring to so many at, at, at the same time, no press ever closes evenly. So you can bump up your transfer time, use that green pad to ensure good even contact with a large number. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you sort of tweak your transfer um, technique according to um, your situation. But, but typically a lot of these products that, that are fragile, in other words, if you really mashed it, you're probably gonna break it. Um, those kind of products, having a Nomex pad on the bottom is certainly okay. Um, so so um, the kind of accessories that I would hope most people have is a Nomex pad, is a green pad. Um, you need a couple of yards of poly poplin uh, fabric when you're pressing, um, larger glass, larger metal, um, you know, the Chrome Lux metal. And so if you read our instructions, generally we're gonna call out um, certainly our, our, our plan A, um, but you'll tune your plan A according to the characteristics of your heat press. So, you know, if you've got a clamshell press, the clamshell presses don't close evenly by default, so you gotta work around that. Generally on a clamshell, I'm gonna tell you to push everything to the back of the press Turn it landscape, and then you've got your best shot at, at even contact. Uh, but as the product gets thicker, um, you know, then, then a, a, a clamshell press is going to be a little bit problematic. So, so you know, if you ever buy a press, you know, or we go out and buy a press unless you need one, of course. But if you ever buy a press, certainly we would we would strongly recommend that it be a swing away. We have a few more. Lori asks, what's the best way to center a design and where do you get the color chart for color matching? Um, so let's take the second question. So she asked about the color chart. You can just request the color chart um, you know, by emailing supportacondi.com. It is on our website. I can't tell you precisely where you go. Um, and, and watch my videos on how to use the color chart. That's the main thing. Is, is using the color chart properly. Um, her first first question was about centering. I'm not positive what she means. I think it was in regards to 
her earlier question. Yeah, you know, often we do, you know, like a, a hugger, um, we will we'll get the transfer and it's really on one piece of paper, but it's both sides of the hugger. And then you want it to be properly mirrored, if you will, so that when you fold the transfer, you're making a sandwich for the hugger so that you can you know, pro spray it, sandwich it, the hugger in there, press, flip it like a burger, press again. And so you, you in Corel or whatever program you use silhouette, you do need to make sure that your halves are lined up for the fold. And use our template, so that's that's kind of the right the standard there is you just download the product template, work within the template, and you should be home free. And if there's a problem uh, with the template, which occasionally there is, email us, we'll get it corrected and get it put back up there. So yeah, it's amazing that as time goes, um, you folks will will always give us great advice. So thank you for that. You'll point out um, an error in a template or I won't even call it error, it's just a, a weakness, something that needs to be improved. Um, and, you know, absolutely please drop us a line, supportcondi.com, and tell us um, that we need to do better, we need to do more different a suggestion. I had an old template yesterday that um, uh, in tech support when we met and talked, um, there was an error, and he explained it to me what the error was, and I still didn't understand. But when the client went to power clip, um, that's a Corel feature, power clip into the template, something something didn't work. And um, it went over my head, so I didn't understand. But he said, hey, I'm glad that one of our great Condi clients pointed out the error so we can fix it. I Last current question, are you doing any expos or shows in New York or New Jersey coming up? Next year. I think next year we've gone to uh, questions about shows uh, in the Northeast, and, and certainly we went to, uh, Jeff and I went to Chicago this year. Had a great show. Thank you for the folks that came out there. You know, absolutely awesome show. So um, I'm not positive. I want to come back to Philadelphia. That was an amazing trip, but I, I haven't I think put we're going it on. to Columbus is, I think is so. there and there. Um, and um, I think Columbus, Milwaukee. Crystal is from, the uh, lady behind the camera, is from Ohio. So um, I'm not sure. I, you know, I think you have every, every uh, right to ask the question because to some extent the Northeast has is, is not had its share of shows. Um, we've had a couple of shows that we did not attend that, that appeared um, in Atlantic City um, that we had shows at exactly the same time, so we could not go. Um, but then that's one of the reasons is we do all the videos. Uh, we did videos this past Monday so that we can um, help you and address your, your needs. We will be in Meadowlands, New Jersey in July ah. of the coming year. So, so we're we're going back to uh, Chicago. Is, is that 2019? July 25th through 26th of 19. Yeah, and that's that. we'll I, I didn't know that. So. And we'll be in Milwaukee in May. Okay, so Milwaukee is a new one for us. Um, so we very much enjoy folks visiting with us, but we want to address the needs and do our best with folks that, for whatever reason, um, don't have the opportunity to go to these shows. Um, and so let us know. Um, I know we, we uh, did videos this past Monday, as I mentioned, and um, it, they're a lot of fun to address, plus we, we can put on this kind of stuff. I want to show you real quick before we, we, I found this piece of glass, and it was just a, it's a, it's our. It's uh, five by seven, right? We'll be making these you in know, Charlotte. This looks, I don't it's know, big. it looks a little bit bigger, so. I don't think it's 8 by 10. I'm, I think this may have been Maybe some six. of the early prototype uh, color light glass, but um, just how beautiful is something like that for a Christmas image? Um, you know, preparing for your Christmas gifts for family, friends. It could be for, um, you know, for selling uh, is a good thing. could be part of recognition. Um, you know, there's just lots of reasons to make something like this, but I've looked at it all day long and just marveled at, at how good it looks. Uh, just absolutely beautiful. And then I had a couple of products. This is the same coating, 
Uh, this is our curved acrylic, and I'm sure some of you have seen it, how beautiful it is. Look at, at how the coating technology now brings out these whites. Just absolutely, um, stunningly gorgeous. So acrylic, you know, you, you press it flat, then you put it in the cooling jig, having given it a little bit of a bend here, and then drop it in. Um, and then one of, I think, basically one of the things that people just completely forget about is that you can sublimate to inexpensive polyester fabric and then wrap it around um, a wooden frame so that, that you've got you know, what people call a gallery wrap. And doing it this way is less expensive than traditional inkjet printing on inkjet canvas. And you have a lot more flexibility because there are so many different kinds of polyester fabrics out there with different textures, uh, you name it. So it's a really inexpensive way. I guess the limiting factor is how big your printer will print, you know, and your, your press. But uh, things like this, just I marvel at how easy this is to do and how good looking it is. And uh, this is another one of the frames that we sell. Um, we call it the shout box. And, you know, home decor it is such a stunningly um, powerful way to make money with sublimation. There's so many opportunities within your home, your office, you know, whatever. And this is what we call our shout box. And the shout box is basically this frame, and then you sublimate to uh, a, a great Unisub hardboard, looks so good, and then just tack it in place with some glue. Got a great product, put it on the wall, low cost, but, but high quality. And if you want to, you could put a piece of color light uh, in this, and you could then turn it into um, a little bit of a, a shadow box. Um, so. You know, you put it on your table, your credenza. Um, you've got just a, a, also a very attractive product using the Color Light film. Promo Print Studio asks, can you sell the Color Light already cut for the wine boxes? Um, I think we, we certainly could. Um, and certainly, um, if you will, uh, just uh, Crystal make a note of that. Um, the Obviously, we can cut it to whatever size, shape, folks need to, but I'll tell you this, cutting the color light is, is, is a trivial process. Just take a, a you, know, you can take a straight edge like a ruler and take the X-Acto blade and cut it, and, um, and by doing it that way, you can also think of other great ideas to, to use the color light. Now you're ultimately going to save money cutting it yourself. Buy the big sheet, cut it down. It's, <clears throat> it, it cuts very easily. Yeah. Um, Razor knife, exact knife, right. straight edge ruler. Can you ask Lori to clarify what she wants a video on? She's requested a video on one of the things you were recently discussing. So Lori, um, I think you asked me to ask Lori. Lori, um, uh, Crystal said you asked for a video on something. Just maybe let us, um, um, let us know what that video would need to be on. Um, we obviously love to do videos. And this, this broadcast will also be uh, saved, yeah, we're gonna, recorded, posted to our YouTube right. channel. So. Well, guys, um, I think uh, we appreciate you being with us uh, this long, and uh, everybody have a great weekend. Next time and you see us, we'll be in Charlotte. We're going to be in Charlotte for the broadcast there. Happy so I'm um, David Gross with Jeff Butler and Crystal behind the camera. We thank everyone uh, for being with us. Be safe.